All right, youth and young adults, you're dismissed. How's everybody doing tonight? It's wonderful to have God's presence on a Wednesday night, isn't it? Yes, he's here, he's here all the time, but there's something about Wednesdays. Everybody works hard all day, and they go to school and have the opportunity to come and just rest in the presence of God and be refreshed, be ready for what God's going to do in your lives tomorrow. It's awesome to... Uh, to be able to have midweek church. Not every church has that opportunity. Or if they have that opportunity, they just, for some reason or another, choose not to take it. But we have chosen to take that opportunity on a Wednesday. Well, we are having um, discussions, what, the last three weeks? This is the third week of creative communication. We've been teaching on how to create, how to creatively communicate with one another in relationships. We put focus on different types of relationships and Again, Pastor Adam and I want to talk to you tonight primarily about the husband and wife relationship. This will be our last week of creative communication, so we really want to leave you with a lot to think about when it comes to relationships in general, but then again, uh, tonight the focus is going to be on husbands and wives. I want to get into the scriptures uh, for tonight. I know last week we had a real fun time together, Pastor Adam and I did, but um, I had a lot of scriptures in front of me that we did not get to, and that is totally unlike me, so I apologize for that. But I'm going to start out with scripture tonight because um, without the word of God and our scriptural focus, what's the point of having a dialogue? So let's get into the word. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 through 33. Everyone's familiar with these scriptures, but tonight we are going to focus um, even more so on men. And um, men leading, spiritual leaders, men being spiritual leaders in the home. And so Pastor Adam's going to speak to you men about that. But let's read the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 through 33. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body. Of which he is the Savior. Now, as a church submits to Christ, so also wives should, should, should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body. But they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Okay, we're going to chew on all the different aspects of this one. Let's have a nice little chew. That's right. You can get your mouths going. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start to chew on the word of God. All right. Um, the word submission really means to be in subjection as to putting yourself under one's covering or authority. Now, when it comes to submission, I know that's a tough thing for women. It's a tough thing for, for men. But God asks us to submit one to another. In other words, we're putting, one, we're putting ourselves together as a team under the authority and headship of Christ, both of us are, okay? So although the husband is the head, the wife submits under the husband, but both are under the headship and covering of Christ. And together they're one flesh with ears that are listening to what it is that the Lord wants to deposit into the home, into the family life. 
And, and the words will come to both. But no matter what has been said through the Holy Spirit to both the, both the husband and wife, it is indeed the husband who in healthy relationships will have the last say. Yes, women, I know that's difficult. But the fact of the matter is God has anointed and appointed men to in, in the home, in healthy homes, to handle and manage things that he has not equipped the women to manage. That's why if you are a single woman or you are a part of a divorced relationship and you are, are living singly um, or your husband is deceased, it is very, very difficult to manage your home because you were not necessarily created for that. And so when the home gets broken up, you're left with a whole lot to deal with that you didn't necessarily have plans for. And yes, the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. He is going to become your guide. He's, he's going to become your leader. And you're, you're going to direct yourself underneath his headship in that matter. But when the husband and wife are together, many times what happens is that is the, the husband will receive something. The wife will receive something. They may, might not necessarily be in unity at that particular moment. Or there may be some element of unity. But the wife has difficulty submitting to the final say that her husband may have over a subject matter. And this is where the Lord is saying, submit in everything. In other words, women don't fear. And I'm going to read you some scriptures that have to do um, with that in just a moment. But, but, but women who submit in any type of situation will, will, will quite often do it underneath the guise of being afraid. Afraid of what kind of decision the husband might be making. You don't need to fear women. You just need to pray. And, and I'll show you um, in First Peter where the Lord um, speaks to us women specifically about that. Now, because the husband is the head of the home, it is his responsibility to love the wife like Christ loved the church. Whoa. That's huge. God help you men. Because the way Christ loves the church is so unconditional, so forgiving, so full of grace that men, you have a difficult job ahead of you. <laughs> and do you want to speak to that before I go on or, or not? Sure. Okay. Well, guys, Amen. ladies, huh? that right there is what I want to talk about. Men, it's like an impossible task to love your wife like Christ loves the church. But that's what the scripture says we're to shoot for. <sighs> what a challenge. But that's what we're supposed to do. So, if you don't know the Lord, if you aren't a praying man, if you aren't a humble man, if you ain't getting on your knees asking for help, if you ain't reading the word of God, listen, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Whew, guys. Now, let me just be blunt and honest about myself. For the better part of the first 13 years of our 25 years of marriage and 26 years of knowing each other, no way was I following the biblical example. Because it used to be I'd approach every single aspect of my day from it's all about me. It's all about me. That ain't working for me, Candace. Candace, you ain't even processing that from my perspective, Candace. I could go on and on and on and on. Then I started to realize I was wrong. Oh, man, did that hurt. <laughs> started to get into the Word of God. Started to go to church. Started to hear the people talking about the Word of God. And filtering things through the Word of God started to get me to realize how wrong I am. But because I'm a male, pride... Pride, oh pride, 
seemed to be the biggest filter I put everything through to rationalize to continue acting a certain way that did not line up with God's word. Even though I was reading God's word, hearing God's word, and believing God's word, I still didn't act God's word. Guys, we are to treat our spouse like Christ treats the church. Unconditional. No reward. Hard. Hard, guys. Especially going out and dealing with other people. And then you come home to this, this beautiful person you married. And you expect her to treat you the way you wanted the world to treat you all day long. She doesn't even have a clue who's been treating you wrong, yet you throw all that stuff you've built up all day long and will say things like, I'm doing this just for you. Oh, man, guys, do we got our work cut out for us. So the, everything we need to know is in the first 11 chapters of the book of Genesis. So in the beginning, God made man, and he made woman from man. She's a female. She's got a fee. She's ain't, she ain't free. You got that. You finally got it. Fee, male. And whoa, man, she looks pretty good. But did you see who came first? So, they're in the garden. The serpent comes in. Look at that piece of fruit there, female. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now, ladies, come on. You're attracted to the bling. Right? She's got a fee. She's got a fee. Now, she eats the apple. Did God say anything to Eve? Nope, because God's got a system set up of order. The moment Adam ate the apple, God goes, Adam, where are you? What are you doing, Adam? I gave you some delegated authority. You're supposed to take care of her. You didn't deal with it because I told you not to eat from that tree. You listened to her. Look out now. It ain't because she's less than. There's, a, there's an order. There's a delegated order. Guys, the Bible says, be careful if you're going to be a teacher because you're held to a double standard. Higher like double standard. Guys, as men, guess what? We're to lead our families. We're the leaders. We're held to a higher standard. We're held to a higher standard. Now, ladies, this is where your part comes in, and it's tough because you have to submit. Now, I'm not talking about submitting to guys that beat you. I'm not talking about submitting to guys that verbally abuse you, and that's the same with you ladies. Ladies. I'm getting real here. You want to understand how to change your marriage? Guys, you need to hang around guys like Iana said. Who are those five people that are speaking into your life? Now, guys, we got to go out there and, and work and make a living. It's tough to deal with those people out there that may not believe like you believe. And you're going to be hearing stuff. You're going to be seeing guys speak stuff. You're going to be tempted to do stuff from now until the day you leave this planet. You have to be around men that will speak life to you, encourage you, be a brother to you to tell you, knock that off, brother. Do it in a way that will... 
show them you really care and love for them so that when you are around your bride, you treat her like Christ treats the church. Guys, it ain't easy. Talk to some older men. They'll have developed strategies. <laughs> some of those strategies are, I don't do the laundry. <laughs> right? That's safe place. Mm -hmm. No. Things, I mean, there are certain aspects that we have to humble ourselves to know that this is an area where I have to let the female be in charge. Delegate authority. Get behind your wife. Encourage your wife. It's not a competition. It's a completion. It's a covenant. And it's unconditional love. And it is, it is such a misnomer how our culture has made a marriage and a wedding to be all about and the teaching that goes on is not properly taught that it's a opportunity to unconditionally, unconditionally show love. And we, we get it all about the big wedding and this big party. Come on now. And then afterwards, there's this letdown. I got to live with her? She's got to live with me? He ain't the same way he was when he was dating me. She ain't the same way when I was dating her. Why? Because when we're dating, there's more unconditional love than when we're married. Because we take it for granted once we get the ring on the finger. Come on now. Are you anticipating the you know what? like you did when you didn't have the ring on your finger. I'm just telling you the truth. They become one flesh. You have to respect. Man, you have to you want respect, then show it. You want respect, then give it. How is she going to know how to respect you if you don't show her and dictate and indicate to her this is what respect is like unconditionally? If you want her to give it to you unconditionally, then who's going to teach her? She needs to be around. Now, ladies, you need to be around, just like the men, some women that understand how to submit properly. And submission ain't me and you're doing whatever I say and I'm treating you like my kids. That is not proper submission. That's your spouse. That's your wife. She's an adult. She's your partner. She completes you. Folks, this is the type of creative communication you have to have with your spouse, and it starts like this, guys. Honey, I need to ask your forgiveness. Yeah. Honey, can we have a talk? I need to ask your forgiveness. I ain't doing a very good job. I've been reading the Word again. I am not treating you like Christ treats the church. If I'm the head of this family, I sure ain't acting like it because I'm acting like the tail most of the time. I ain't leading the kids. I'm sitting on my behind watching TV, drinking my beer, drinking whatever, wanting everybody to serve me. Oh, guys, it's hard. You got to be around some guys so you can vent. That's the truth. You've got to find some men that's safe that you can get on the horn and go, man, I need some help. I need some help because I am having a hard time understanding what it's like to respect my wife. She doesn't respect me, and I'm supposed to teach her and lead her in respect? Hmm. And ladies, you want him to love you? Well, then you better unconditionally love him. It works both ways ways you want him how many of you ladies are willing to get all gussied up like you do for all your lady parties that you would for your husband i'm being serious here it doesn't matter how far along you're in your relationship 
Why in the world, ladies, will you not spend all that time getting all dressed up to go out with your ladies and look at the other ladies than you would for your man? I'm speaking to adults about truth. This is the truth. Just ponder that. Guys, you want respect, then you better show it. Ladies, you want love, then you better love. See, the word says, right, it's the very opposite that we got to give each other because this whole phrase, this whole part of Scripture in Ephesians 5 starts out, submit one to another out of reverence for Jesus Christ. So in other words, if you have a filter of you're going to revere your spouse through, the, through Jesus first, then it's going to be able to happen. But if you're doing it on your own, you're, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. Ladies, when your husband comes home sometimes, how about this? How about giving him a break? Let him have 15 minutes maybe to decompress without you around. Like let him have 15 minutes, keep the kids away or yourself away instead of going, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. Let him decompress so that he can come in the house after working all day, driving through traffic, And go, you know what, honey? I think we need to change a few of the things we do in our lives so that we can have a different lifestyle. I'm just throwing out some options. I've heard some things through some people of my 22 years in the Navy that did stuff like that. This one wife goes, I don't put the kids or me around him for a half an hour. Half an hour, I just let him be by himself. And it was, she goes, it was incredible how I met him. They were a couple from England. Never forget it. We lived in Iceland and we got to meet him. They, they had two small boys. Half an hour. She said, nope, half an hour. You go be by yourself because I don't want to be around you until you have your half an hour. <laughs> well, does, do you understand? She said, and she's like, why would I want to do this after what he's been going through? I don't know what he goes through, but for, for like eight to ten hours, he's getting pinged on. Got to perform, got to perform. He was a... He was a major in, in the uh, British military. He had been around a while, and they had built up a system, and they went through some tough times, and they said, Wait, I give him a half an hour. And it's amazing, because if he gets that half an hour by himself, oh, my gosh, what a great man he is. There's not a one of us that has down periods and times that we need some help. I'm trying to talk about some real things that pertain to the Word of God. Men, it's hard it ain't easy. It's hard to be the leader of anything. We're supposed to be the leader of our family. We are supposed to lead our wives. The, the wives so desperately want us to lead them. They do. They desperately want it. The culture has got us thinking we got to do this. We got to be sensitive. We got to be this or that or the other. They want us to lead but in the absence of pure male leadership, they will step in. And then what happens is discombobulated leadership because they were not made to do that. Men were. That's God's word. If it's hard to take, I am not apologizing. Don't be mad at me. Go question God. That's what he said. That's what he said. You know, as you were talking, I was just picking up, the Holy Spirit was just ministering to me about the fact that, as Pastor Adam was talking about strategy, talk to your spouse about a strategy that works for you and your spouse <clears throat> when it comes to some of these areas that are difficult. This is part of this creative communication. Take the time to recognize we've got gaps in our relationship here. We have issues here. Let's go out to dinner, honey, and let's take a journal and let's talk about some of these areas that are not working for each other. Let's get it down on paper. Let's pray about it. You pray about it individually. Pray about it together. But when you begin to write things down and then go and take it to God in prayer, that element of discipline will cause the Holy Spirit to operate on your behalf because you care enough to do the extra step that's necessary to <coughs> make sure that something changes in your life and in your marriage. But you have to take the time to discuss it and move to the move move to those next steps. And God will meet you where you're at. 
Now, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33, the word says, Each one of you must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Okay, basically what this means is that to the husband, respect is love. <laughs> to the wife, love is respect. And what happens many times in a marriage is the husband and wife will get stuck in this cycle. This one scripture is representative of a cycle that exists. And when things start to go downhill really fast, you just need to ask the Lord, okay, God, where are we stuck in this cycle? Am I not giving him the respect that he needs because I don't feel like he's loving me the way I need to be loved, in which case I don't feel respected? Because as Pastor Adam was saying, you give out of yourself the very thing you want to receive from somebody else. But if you don't feel like you're getting it from them, then how are you going to give it back out again? So you better go to another source that can provide you with your love and respect so that you can give it out to break this cycle. And that would be Jesus Christ himself. If you need love or you need respect, go and get it from God and then be a giver and deposit it into the other person and that will break the cycle. But you have to begin to, to go to the Lord in prayer and say, God, we're just not connecting. What is this? And the Lord will minister to you. Look, he's seeing things different than you. When men look through their lens, men see respect. Women don't see that when they look through their lens. When women look through their lens, they look through the lens of love. And then everything is determined by both parties as, am I getting enough of that very thing? And the answer is usually no, you're not getting enough of it, one way or the other. But then stop looking at that party to be the answer and look to God to be the answer, and then that will help break that cycle. So talk about this with your spouse. We also know that the Hold word... On. Yes, and... Did you guys hear that? Talk. Not with another talk to your spouse. Like, talk. Let them talk. Listen. And then each, listen to each other. I don't want to go over that and just gloss that over. One of the biggest problems I've noticed in our culture is because we're so focused on getting everything so fast. If it doesn't seem to manifest in about two seconds, we're ready for the next because of the drive through because of the iPhone, because of everything that's at our finger. And so with our relationships with people, and specifically we're talking about our spouse, we expect the same. Folks, slow it down. Listen to your spouse. And you know what? It's going to take some time. You have got to let Women, you've got to listen to your husband. Men, you're going to have to articulate what really is, and you just can't grunt it out. You've got to say it out. Share your feelings with her. She's going to share hers with you. That's one of the struggles for us guys, because we turn them off, and then we start watching TV while they're talking, or we'll be on our phone while they're talking, and we're not focusing. Come on. It's the truth. And ladies, you're about the same way now with these phones and everything. You just, you, and then if they touch it, they tweak one little thing we don't like. Oh boy, then we're really tuning them out. We have to do what she was just recommending, but that means actually doing it, that means talking talking. Yes, to that person while you were dating that you couldn't get enough of, but now that you're married for a couple of decades, you can't stand. Uh, come on now. That's the truth. You have an opportunity to do what I always, the Bible always tells us, and I repeat it a lot. Repent and forgive. Repent and forgive. And if you have Jesus, that's how you do it. Because many times we can't do it in the natural. We need Jesus to re help us so we can repent and, re and forgive. Because then we'll be humble because we'll realize we're not all that in a bag of chips and the dip too and the soda, that we're the greatest thing in the planet. And actually in the part that you're upset with your spouse and you have just as big a part to play. But you're blind to your own issue. So talk them talk to each other 
we gave you those skills last week, even with our messed up dialogue there, but um, active listening, clarification, effective questioning, and appropriate feedback are ways that will enhance your communication skills one with another. But let's go to, um, to verse 28 in Ephesians chapter 5. The word says, he who loves his wife loves himself. Mm. Okay. Now, men, if you're having trouble loving your wives, it's because in that moment you're not loving yourself. Can right? I speak on it's, that? It's, yes, you can. Guys, here's the truth. You know why we don't love our wives a lot? Because we get angry with ourselves. Because we feel like we're letting them down. And so because that right there, Jesus said the two greatest commandments is love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Your wife is your neighbor. You've got to love yourself before you can give any love to your neighbor. And you've got to love God first to get the deposit in you to love your neighbor. So this is saying the same thing. Paul's saying the same thing. He who loves his wife loves himself. But if you don't love yourself because you're angry because you already are putting yourself as a failure. You're saying, I'm not good enough. So wives, what does that mean you have to constantly do to your man? I know you might not want to hear this. You've got to build him up. Amen. You've got to stop nagging him and talking down to him that he's a failure and he's a loser and he's a nobody. You're not doing enough for this family. Negative, ladies. You speak life into your husband and life will come out of him. I'm telling you, ladies, you have a great opportunity to speak life into your families. The very thing you want to see birthed, you can be the biggest cheerleader for your husband. It's huge. It's huge. And guys, you need to be around other guys to vent to them and then appreciate your wife as she's building you up. Believe in yourself and go forth and conquer for her. Actually, what Pastor Ram's talking about is really one of the hardest things to do is it's hard to deposit seed into your spouse when you're angry with them. Mm -hmm. In other words, the last thing you want to do is build somebody up when they've just cut you off. And we withdraw and <coughs> hold back the blessing that God has on the inside of us for the other person because we simply think, I will withhold that gift right now because mm. they don't deserve to receive it. Instead of saying, oh my gosh, the only way we're going to break this thing is if I be compassionate and understanding and non-judgmental right now in this particular moment. Go it's lower. It's up to me. I've go got lower. to do it. I've got to go lower. Go lower. I've got to go lower right here. But our own pride will cause us to be quiet. That moment to be quiet is not the right moment to be quiet. That's the moment where you should say, listen. I hear in your voice that you are so very upset about this. And let me just tell you what a great job you're doing. I love you. I stand behind you. I know you're frustrated. I know you don't like yourself right now. But I love you in the midst of this. But women will withhold saying that at that time because we're watching them suffer and we're kind of enjoying it. Come on, you're laughing, but it's the truth, right? And Finally, he's song. getting his. Ha yeah. <laughs> ha. But, but it's, and the same thing goes vice versa with the husband. Uh huh, she's getting it now. Mm -hmm. No, but what would Christ do? He would grab the hand of the spouse that is losing it and say, Look, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. No, you need a few moments to yourself. Whatever. I'm going to pray for you. We'll get it together. But we have to understand this is how our human nature works. But Christ came so that we might have victory over <laughs> our flesh that wants to do all of those things. Yeah. That's where you put the power of God into effect in your life is you say, I would like to respond this way, but because of the power of Christ on the inside of me, I am not going to do that at this time. Amen. And instead, I'm going to deposit seed and encourage night and day. Okay, let's go on just a little bit more. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, actually verses 1 through 9. I'll read 1 through 6. Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands so that any of them do not believe the word. 
They may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet, quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. You are daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Now, this scripture doesn't say you can't wear the bling. That's not what it's talking about. Okay? Sure? It's just talking about, I'm sure. It just means don't be doing all of this and not have the quiet and gentle submissive spirit, okay? You can do the things that make you beautiful on the outside, but you better have the inner beauty on the inside. It's not saying wear the mask on the outside and pretend to be somebody that you're not. Instead, allow God to change you on the inside, and then you can reflect that any way you want to, any hairstyle or whatever your gig is, okay? You can do that thing. This is not about trying to take away your creativity as a woman. It's simply just saying, get the order right. And what does he say here? He says, gentle and quiet spirit. What does this mean? This is what this means. In the Greek, an undisturbed spirit knowing you trust God. Okay, isn't that profound? Okay, that means and have the unfading beauty of an undisturbed spirit knowing you trust God. In other words, it means that no matter what kind of turmoil you might feel by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can put that to rest because you trust God and you do not fear. In the case of Abraham and Sarah, Abraham even told Sarah to go into the house of Pharaoh and pretend that he was, she was not married to him and to simply go and to be with Pharaoh. Can you imagine how scared Sarah was hearing an instruction from her husband to go and do that? And I can't even go into that scripture in depth right now because there's not enough time. But the bottom line is Sarah went in submission to her husband's request, trusting God the entire time. With an undisturbed spirit is what those <coughs> scriptures are saying. Which means she believed God so much that even if her husband told her to go and do something that, that seemed so ludicrous to her, she could follow knowing that God was going to rescue the both of them, even from his bad decision. You have got to understand that no matter what decision your husband makes, God is going to rescue you. All right? But if you, this, and this is proper boundaries. Listen, God looks down from heaven and he wonders, will we stay within the boundaries that he set or will we not trust him and run outside the boundaries that he's put in his word? So through the time that you live and walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and you grow into spiritual maturity with him, he will allow you to test those boundaries as he watches because he's determining whether or not you're going to stay within them or not based on what it is that you're doing. So when God says, stay within the boundary of the instruction that your husband's giving you and you're always running outside of it, God's going, she ain't getting the message and I'm not going to change him until she does. This is very, very important. It's very deep. And let me tell you why it's deep. It's deep because God will honor what's in his word, but he won't honor what's outside of his word. So when you decide to take it upon yourself, I got to go figure this out and go do that. And I got to usurp this and figure this thing out. Then God's saying, hmm, she don't trust me because if she'll do exactly what my word says, then I'm going to rescue her and him. And he's going to bring you right back around that mountain at another time. So you get another opportunity to see if you're going to comply. Amen. He's going to do that. He does that to each and every one of us. He's going to give us that missing piece. That's what he does. It's like, well, you didn't get it yet. No biggie. You're not ready to go to the next because you keep thinking it's all about him or her and it's really about you. Because if you're in an uncon con unconditional relationship of love, like Christ loves the church unconditionally, yeah. even though we commit abominations, we are whores, we, we commit adultery against him all the time and he's waiting for us to stop it. I'm here. You're my bride. It's the truth. 
He's like, will you please humble yourself? Pick up your missing piece this time. Don't be looking at the other one, pointing out their problems. Humble yourself to look at that thing that is that big plank in your eye that is preventing you from seeing anything. And it's all about you going lower. If you've got one of these on your finger called a wedding ring, that's the deal. It ain't competition, it's completion. It's a covenant forever. It's an opportunity to show a blessing when somebody doesn't treat you right. That's the real opportunity. Will you treat somebody better when they don't deserve it? Will you serve them when they'd spit on you, when they've whipped you, when they've cursed you? Will you take the, the higher road and not go down to the pig pen? Folks, this is what it's all about when we're talking about Christianity. Jesus came to say, I'll take all of the entire humanity's sins so that I can have a relationship with my bride called the church. If you haven't received Jesus Christ, that's what it's all about. You admit that you've got problems, you've got issues, you humble yourself and you say, I need help, I need Jesus, I'm going to speak that out of my mouth. Jesus, I need you and believe that in your heart and his word says that he will be in you, living in you forever. He won't leave you, he won't forsake you, even though you're gonna continue to struggle for the rest of your life. He's saying, rely on the Holy Spirit presence to help you overcome those issues. Folks, that's what it's all about. You need that in your walk. You need that if you're married. You need that if you're thinking about getting married. You need it. You need him. You need Yeshua, Yamashiach, Jesus, the Messiah, in your heart. Now the band's going to come up here for this last set. The altar team's going to be up here. Folks, we're trying to to speak extremely direct and give you some real life examples about relationships, specifically marriage between a man and a woman. These principles work for, for your friends, your, your friendships you have, but you need to understand if you do not have Jesus Christ in your heart, being born again, you are never going to be able to understand what your purpose and destiny is. You need Jesus Christ. And if you don't have him, you need him right now. The altar team's going to be up here to pray with you, pray for you. We'll be up here if you've got a praise report and you want to tell us, and we'll hoot and holler with you. But I ask you right now as the lights come down for you to rise and acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life.